was done to uh, basically peel the car around in order to keep the patient stable. So uh, we just don't take somebody and run them the car like you see in Hollywood. We, we actually have to take them out uh, in a way that we don't uh, give them any more injuries than they already have. They will do everything they can to protect the patient. What you're seeing going on inside the car is we're going to put uh, extrication blankets. It is a uh, blanket that protects them. It's got Kevlar mask. It uh, protects them from sharp objects, fire, uh, and keeps everything away from the patient as they cut the car apart. Something that uh, extra companies have to do is they have to take the glass out first. So you'll see them cut the glass with a saw. Uh, we don't want to just smash the glass in. In the front windshield, we want to cut it so that it keeps it away from the paint. But uh, in the other windows, you'll see them just take the glass out so it won't burst out at them or on the patient. You see the wood blocks down here? That is used to stabilize the car. So uh, the extrication companies will come in and place those blocks. They're called cribbing. And once they do that, they flatten the tire so the car is completely rest on that wood cribbing so they don't move. The tool that you see them using right now is called a sawzall. They're going to cut uh, what we call the deep post on this car. Uh, they're going to cut it out and get ready to take the roof off the car. You'll see them working at that right now. Oh, I think they want to take it out. Huh? I'm just going to take it out. Yeah. They're going to cut seat belts off because seat belts uh, can present a problem to them, especially if they're on. They do have a, a device in there that tightens up the patients. You know, just when you get in a car crash, the seat belt will tighten, so tighten you up into the car. So we actually have to cut that off. The uh, tool that you see the firefighter <laughs> using is uh, called uh, cutters. And basically that is a tool that will just penetrate the metal on the A post, which is the post in front of you when you're in the front seat of the car. That's what they call that. And they will use that to cut that post. And then they'll move it to the other side and cut the other one. And by the time they're done, they will have the, the whole roof cut off with the saws off and the uh, cutters. Yeah, he's talking. Yeah, he's talking. They were about uh, three and a half to four minutes into the time that it was dispatched. And the fire companies and EMS has already gotten to the point where they're cutting the car and getting ready to pull the, the, the victim out. Keep an eye on the time because that's important. Every patient inside of a vehicle in a trauma situation, which means that we have approximately 20 minutes to get them to an ER 25, depending. Uh, that's our goal anyway, um, is to get them out of the car as quick as we can, get them in an ambulance and get them treated. And, uh, so they will start going to the hospital. And that really depends on the crash itself. This one, there wasn't a rollover crash, which means the car would flip over. This was just a uh, car hit a car crash at an intersection. So the extrication isn't that bad. Uh, in a rollover crash where the hood would be crunched down and the person would be mangled inside of the car, and I hate to use those kind of words, but that's what it is. Those kind of extrications will take up about 20 minutes. So a lot of times we would try to get the paramedic or EMT into the car and start stabilizing.
Okay, they got uh, the two A post. The A post would be these right here. They're working on the B post right now, which is these two right here. If you look here, this is the uh, last post. They got all of these on this side. And they're working on those right now. And they will have the roof off of this car. So, guys, don't try this at home. I don't recommend you make a car for a convertible. Oh, I'm hurt. My arm got hurt. I just realized if it was this hard with these cars, imagine that I'm old school, like full metal cars. You gotta take one of the little low torque.
when you are traveling at 50 miles an hour and your airbags deployed and you're not strapped in your car seat with your seatbelt, it'll be like 50 footballs hitting you in the face at the same time. Okay, I'm not kidding. You will get hurt if you don't put your seatbelts on in the front seat or any place for that matter in your car, especially when there's an airbag in because it takes an explosion to set off an airbag. Cell phone on your lap, 